A little Connect4 diagram before told us that while syscall and sysret are what's preferred on 64-bit, sysenter and sysexit are what's preferred for maximum compatibility on 32-bit AMD and Intel CPUs. So this was created before the AMD extensions, and that's why both of them support it. So let's see exactly how those work. Okay, so sysenter, how does it work? Well, as before, there's some model-specific registers involved. Love those icosahedrons. So the CS value gets set to I32 sysenter CS MSR, so the bottom 16 bits. So 174. Now SS uses the same MSR, it's named CS, but then it does that sort of plus 8 math like we saw before with the syscall. ESP is just going to get set to whatever this MSR says to set it to, and EIP is just set to whatever this MSR says to set it to. Sysexit then should be the opposite, so it should be changing the CS back to what it was before. Well, it kind of does that, and you hope that it does it. What it does is it sets it to CS plus 16, so whatever's in this MSR plus 16, so it's going to again increment up that GDT table and pick the thing from there. Likewise, SS gets this MSR plus 24. ESP is, <clears throat> ESP is set to the value that is stored in ECX, and EIP is set to the value stored in EDX. So that does not seem symmetrical with what we just learned about sysenter, so that means there's this implicit expectation that sysenter may have not have stored it, but the sysexit better have uh, stored the ESP value and replaced it into ECX so that it can be put back by the sysexit. So no matter what, whatever's laying around in these two registers, that's going back into ESP and EIP when the sysexit is called. So just visualizing these registers a little bit, sysenter CS, bottom 15, or 16 bits rather, are set to the CS selector, and then that's again used with some math to find the other, the ring zero SS, the ring three CS, and the ring zero, uh, sorry, ring three SS. And ESP and EIP are one way, they'll get you a value to put for the kernel, but they don't give you a way back. So visualizing that quickly, we have the bottom bits, 8, CS just takes them exactly as is when going into kernel space. That would be interpreted as index 1 here, ring 0 code, index 1. All right, SS is just CS plus 8 for all intents and purposes, so that would be index 2. <clears throat> The sysexit, trying to get you back out of kernel space, is starting from this exact same 8 and then adding 16 to it. So now we get hex 18 interpreted like this. You get ring 3's code starting right there. But this is even more of an uh, what's going on here than it was for the syscall because syscall at least there was like separate slots for going in implicitly going to ring zero and going out implicitly going back to ring three. Here there's not two slots, there's just a single slot. And that means, you know, necessarily when you were specifying the ring zero code and stack, you would have wanted to leave the bottom two bits equal to zero. And here again, they would be zero if nothing else is happening. So what's happening here? Well, just like before, we had to dig into the nitty-gritty details of sysexit, the operation section in the manual. So if it's 64 bits, no, we're not looking at 64 right now. We're looking at 32. So 32 bits, 32 bits, it says it's the IA32 sysenter CS plus 16. And then here we go. That's what we're looking for, CS selector or 3. And that forces you on sysexit, going back to user space, to go to ring 3. And likewise... Again, the DPL is forced to three. So you're back in user space. This has been ORed with three, and so you have the RPL of three. And the CS is again just the SS plus, sorry, the SS is again CS plus eight. And so basically you end up with, according to the way that things must be set up for sys enter and sys exit to work, you must have effectively ring zero code followed by ring zero stack followed by ring three code followed by ring three stack. All right, so there's this interesting little point in the manuals that says the sysenter and sysexit instructions are companion instructions, but they do not constitute a call return pair. When executing a sysenter instruction, the processor does not save state information for the user code. For instance, the instruction pointer, right? I just said that, you know, the instruction pointer gets restored from whatever's sitting around in the EDX register. So it's not explicitly saved. So someone somewhere needs to save it. That ultimately becomes up to the operating systems to figure out what their personal convention is to save and restore state. 
So that means that unlike sys call, sys ret, these are unbalanced. And what do you do when you have an unbalanced situation? You throw chunks of a moon at people. Words to live your life by.